Hey everybody, it's the announcement guy. I'm here with my buddy Stacy. Wanted to let you know that the pancake breakfast is alive and well today, right after service from 9 to noon. Tell us what's on the menu this year, Stacy. Well, we have pancakes, we have gluten-free pancakes, we have sausage, and we have vegetarian sausage. Yeah, made from grass clippings. That's really good. <laughs> so stop by the pancake breakfast, say hello, it's on a love offering basis, and we'd love to see you there. Here's what's coming up. We're teaming up with the Action Center for our annual school supply drive. With your help, over 5,000 kids in the Jefferson County area will receive pencils, books, crayons, brand new school supplies that are needed for quality education. Drop off supplies today and next Sunday. You can also donate through our Amazon wish list. Visit our events page at milehighchurch.org for details. Create deeply satisfying relationships of any type and heal trauma at our upcoming workshop, Whole Brain Relationships, Trauma-Informed Thinking with Nick Lawrence on Sunday, July 24th. This is a juicy relationships workshop. It's about helping you thrive in your relationships instead of surviving in your relationships. You get the opportunity to, to practice metaphysics in a scientific way that will benefit every, every relationship that you have. Mile High Church has over 200 guided meditations on Insight Timer, the number one meditation app for sleep, anxiety, and stress. You can follow us and get notified when we post new meditations and affirmations from our ministerial team. Download the app and join the growing global community. Have you ever missed a Sunday service and wished you could listen to it while driving to work or on your morning walk? Well, we have a podcast. Subscribe to the Mile High Church podcast, where Sunday messages are posted every week. There are many options to listen on your favorite media player and enjoy our timely messages at your convenience. Nothing says community like a pancake breakfast. This is something Moses used to do around the campfire long, long ago. All love offerings today go to support the youth ministry, our programs, and our camps, and all the stuff that Stacy's got going on. Is this a good thing? It's a great thing. All right. Have a great week. Well, good morning, you party animals. How you feeling? Okay. So when I woke up this morning, I was thinking, God is so good. You feeling that way? God is so good? Why don't you sing it along with me here? All right? up this morning singing, Barry is so good. <laughs> it's the truth, isn't it? Thank you, Dr. Barry Ebert.
Barry Ebert has a new CD, by the way. I think if you go into the store and, and really convince them, they'll, they'll sell you one even, possibly. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Dr. Barry. Thank you to our wonderful band. Good morning, Mile High Church. Welcome, welcome into spiritual community this morning. Welcome to those of you watching online. We are thrilled to be together. A number of us have been here all weekend long in this beautiful container called the Inner Child Journey. About 70 of us, uh, congregants and staff participating. And so if you've been here with me this weekend in the Inner Child Journey, wave or wait, let's say good morning. Good morning, ICJ participants. So good to see you all here with us. How many of you have ever taken the inner child journey? Raise your hand. Okay, great. Wonderful. Well, I just want to say that I am so happy and proud that that is one of the things that we offer here at Mile High Church that is a pathway to inner and spiritual transformation. It's an opportunity to really work. It's not one of those seminars where people just lecture at you all weekend. It's a, a personal growth work experience where doing that work reveals more of the light that we are to give to the world. So I am super happy and proud that we have so many things like this here at Mile High Church that we can all walk through together to make a difference in this world. So thank you very much. And it's very important to us that the things that we're about here at our church are in alignment with our vision and mission, that they reflect that and express that. And this is one of them, as is coming into spiritual community like this each Sunday. And so I invite you now to join me as we read aloud together our vision and mission and remind ourselves who we are and what we're here to do together. So first of all, our vision, oneness reveal. A world of love, peace, and abundance for all. And our mission, to serve as a spiritual beacon for personal empowerment and global enlightenment. Woo! Yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, we can cheer for that. Yeah, that's who we are. That's what we're here to do. And as we come together in that vision and mission, I invite us to breathe deeply together. We have our memorial candle set up this morning because we want to honor a bright light in our community who made his transition a number of weeks ago. He is not only the one wonderful husband of one of our ministers, Reverend Linda Engel, Rangel's husband, Mike Rangel, made his transition recently. We have a picture of him coming up on the screen. And Mike has been a profound influence here at Mile High Church. He served as chair of the Mile High Church Foundation at one point. He's been involved in the men's work here, taken many classes. He loved Mile High Church dearly. So if you're here this morning experiencing the joy and richness of this community, it's partly because of the contributions that Mike Ringel has made to our community, his energy, his light, his love. All of us make a difference, and I can truly say Mike has. So this morning, as we light this candle, we light this candle in acknowledgement that Mike has been and remains a light, a light of love, a light of joy, now and forevermore. And we send our love and gratitude to Mike Rangel now. And as we breathe in that love and gratitude, I invite us into prayer. We're going to sing together, have a few moments of silence, and then Reverend Millie is going to pray us in. Let us begin.
I can hear the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of God is in. And so, right here and right now, I take this moment to acknowledge that God is all that there is. God is everywhere present. There is no place where God is not. That presence is felt right here, right now, in this place. I know that as that absolute, as that pure love, as that pure joy expresses down on this planet at this time and everywhere in the universe. I know that I am a part of it, for I am a unique expression of the divine. And as I know this for myself, I know this for each and every sentient being on the planet. I know this for every person within the sound of my voice, no matter when it is heard. I know that for each and every person today that honors God in whatever way they choose, be it an ashram, out in nature, mosque, wherever they choose, they are blessing, they are being blessed by that one mind, that one source that is in, through, and as all of us right here and right now. And so I give thanks. I give thanks for this time. I give thanks for this opportunity to say thank you. I am grateful for our service today, grateful for the message today, for it is a heart-rendering message that speaks directly to our souls by Dr. Michelle and our music. I am just grateful, just so grateful for everything and all things. And so with that, I release this prayer I release it unto the law. I release it unto that law of mind that always says yes. Always yes. Even to those who are not aware of their special gift of being one with source, this source still says yes. And so thank you, God. Thank you, love. Thank you, life. And I release this prayer now unto the law. And we can affirm it together by saying, and so it is. Amen. Let my soul surrender to the spirit that's inside of me. I let my heart fall open to this love that is setting me free. In this sacred moment where I stop and taste the breath of peace. I leave the troubles of this world behind me And I rest in your amazing grace Move in me, great spirit Now I feel you in my heart In your presence I remember that we never have been apart stories at the door for later 
Step into the silence, my When my cup is empty I am filled to overflow with peace I know I have the kingdom in me On a journey that will never cease Move in me, great spirit Now I feel you in my heart In your presence I remember That we never have been apart In your presence I remember That we never have been Our words of inspiration come from our founder, Ernest Holmes. The mind of man is continuously unfolding into a greater recognition of its real plan in the creative order of the universe. And from the secret, all that exists is the one universal mind, and there is nowhere that the one mind is not. It exists in everything, and the one mind is all intelligence, all wisdom, and all perfection. It is everything and everywhere at the same time. If everything is the one universal mind, and the whole of it exists everywhere, then it is all in you. Dr. Michelle is going to be talking about the divine mind today and uh, going to be talking about how our thoughts shape our reality. So she requested this one, so uh, <clears throat> you can blame it on her, all right? When the voices start Don't take long before they run From your head right to your heart We got fears about the future Regrets about the past And stuff we're not sure where it's from But it's coming on fast We're all thinking stuff together But feeling all alone And we're making up this movie Our own motion picture show When you walk out in the world each day It's a battle for your mind Some folks want your money some folks want your time and they all want your attention and they get it how they can god will the god of your mind there lies your promised land because we're all made up of all that stuff we're taking in each day and if we don't pay attention we're gonna waste our lives away it's what we're thinking about it's what we're thinking about it's what we're thinking about It's not enough to go around Other folks thinking we can all be fed The solutions can be found But we're bunkered in the high walled camps Left and right it seems And there's not much time for talking When everybody screams In every new election We reach another low But unless we work together Where do we think we'll go? Well, we used to have Walter Cronkite For a half hour every day Now it's 24-7 red alert News folks won't go in our minds like a billion nasty weeds till it makes it hard for us to find some place to plant our seed might just be the off switch is the best control of all cause ain't no TV hero gonna catch you when you fall it's what we're thinking about it's what we're thinking about
Investment in war is the only way. Lots of people thinking that's the truth today that the world is just a sandbox. Game of push and shove. Other folks singing that there is no power greater than love. And we were not left alone here to wait for peace to come. We've been given all the tools we need. Let's start using some. It's what we're thinking about. My High All-Stars, that's Rob Lowe on the piano right there. Thank you, Dr. Barry, our wonderful band, as you mentioned, Rob Lowe, Kent Rottenstrauss, Darren Ross, and Bijou Barbosa. Great job. One of the reasons that I wanted that song before the message is you don't really hear people saying very often, well, I went and heard that minister talk and boy, what an earworm I went away with, right? But a song, what we're thinking about. So if you don't leave with anything else today, I've done my job. <laughs> what we're thinking about, that's what we're gonna talk about. But before we head into that, I do want to mention that we have an initiative that we've been working on as a community from many directions in many ways, on our staff, with our ministers, in our practitioner world, in our organization and structure that is all about health and wellness. And so for this year in 2022, we've been really exploring together a greater sense of health and wellness, having conversations about that, having programs and workshops, message series about that. And so I am starting a message, message series that's in that vein. But I want to let you know before I go there, a decision that we have made that we think is in alignment with the health and wellness initiative. It's a change that we feel we want to make and need to make in the life of our church right now. And it is about our Wednesday night live service. We feel that right now the healthiest decision for the energy of our staff, our musicians, for the stewardship of the funds that you so generously give to us, that it would be good for us to pause that service for the rest of the year as of August 1st. To give ourselves a, a chance to discover what wants to be on Wednesday night since we all came back from being away from the pandemic. That's one part of our church that hasn't quite come back to life again. We aren't seeing people coming to the service. We're wanting to be sure that we're doing something in that time frame that really serves the community. So we want to let you know that we're letting it go on pause for now, and we will work the rest of this year to rediscover what will be there. And if you have any questions or concerns about that, you can talk to me or any of our ministers and staff about it. But we thank you for your support on that. And thank you for supporting us in being a healthy, vibrant organization. And, yes. And so my two-week series today is all about spiritual health, how to maximize spiritual health. Starting today, we're going to talk about the mind. Next week, we're going to talk about the heart. 
And so we're going to discover and, and really lean into what we're thinking about. I would call this probably a classic science of mind message because we're really going to explore our founder, Ernest Holmes, and many other ancient traditions and the relationship to the mind. And it's pretty simple, as Barry saying, what we're thinking about is creating the scenes of our life is manifesting in the world. But before we go to that part, I really want to invite us to take a look at how our founder, Ernest Holmes, taught about mind, to represence ourselves to mind as, as Dr. Patty read, as the presence that is everywhere in everything. When Holmes would write about mind, if you read him at all, he would often capitalize the M in mind when he was speaking about the mind of the universe, the mind that is God, the mind that is the infinite. And when he was talking and referring to the human experience of mind, he would often write in a lowercase m, the mind of our human experience. And so he says a lot about this as an invitation to claim and own our place in mind and as a mind expressing in the mind that God is. His theory, our theory, is that this mind that is God is everywhere present. That it, our creation idea is that it created everything out of itself. It had nothing else to create anything from, so it created all that is out of itself, and therefore everything, every person, every object, every experience, every being, every tree, every flower is imbued with the same energy of the divine everywhere. And this actually... Uh, jives with what physics has told us, that our universe is a universe made of energy, that everywhere that same energy is expressing itself through all of creation, but it uniquely expresses as an iPad or as a person or as a, a, a cloud floating by, that it's all uniquely expressed, but when you take it down to the molecular level, it's still all the same thing, energy. And if Holmes were alive today, he would say it's still all the same thing, mind, capital M. It's still all the same thing, God. That's our definition of God, of what source is, and that we are all co-creators in that mind. Holmes has many quotes about this, but I'd like to share one with you this, to, this morning. He says, and he, by the way, he wrote in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and so his language is not always very gender inclusive. And so we keep the language the way it is when we quote it, but I would change it if I were uh, queen of the world. I would probably shift it a little bit to be more gender inclusive, and I do change it in my little books when I read it, but here's this quote. To believe in God effectively means much more than simply asserting that you believe in a power greater than yourself. The presence of God to you must be an inner experience, a spiritual conviction that is real. You must know that God is right where you are and not separate from you. Every time your heart beats, it is responding to an infinite rhythm no man or person has ever fathomed. Every time you think, you are thinking creatively because your mind is one with the creative spirit. And in his writing, he capitalized this next part for emphasis. He says, out of the mind of God, you were created as a divine being. And as a divine being, you must recognize and know the source of that which created you out of itself, the creative spirit of God Almighty. So my first call to us is to remember and to re recognize that we are saying in this teaching that God is mind and mind is God. All that is is God and all that is 
is the mind of God. And we exist in it as co-creative energies. For we believe that this presence imbued us with the co-creative energy that God is. That the mind of God is our mind. That we are always in touch with it. That there's something within it that is always expressing through it. Through us. As it. That we are creating from it. We are creating the scenes of our life individually and collectively that allows for life on planet earth to occur. That we are connected in the oneness of it, that divine mind at the core of us, and we are connected in the diversity of it as we are a unique expression of it. That we are uh, experiencing the mind of God and we also are experiencing the, the uniqueness that is us that might be called the ego self or the unique self. I don't believe that the goal of our human experience is to have an egoectomy to release ourselves of our, our individual experience of ourselves such that we merge into the one and have no distinction. I think being on the planet, that part of the evolutionary journey is can I live in the paradox? Can I live in both the reality that I am the oneness and I am the diversity? That I live and have access to the all that is while I uniquely specialize it in my experience and contribute to the experience Experience that humans are having on the planet, that it's both and, both and, and that a healthy spiritual being stops abdicating their power with regards to their own life and with regards to the contribution they are constantly making to the experience of humanity. That we're not some little islands isolated over here in a corner and our life is just happening to us. That we're not little islands over in a corner and there's just stuff going on out there that has nothing to do with me that all of us have our unique experience and our unique journey and all of us are connected to the all of it and can influence and can participate in the collective journey that's occurring. And those of us who refuse to abdicate our power and say, I know who I am, and I know the truth about my essence, I know the truth about the contribution that I can make, and I'm gonna stand in my power, and I'm going to make a contribution, and I'm gonna live my life from that place, find ourselves more connected and grounded in the truth of who we are. Yes, yes. Now we have to also understand in this, when we start to explore the mind that is our unique experience, the greatest challenge is that the word mind for humans includes all the thoughts, the beliefs, the emotions, the feelings and experiences we've had. And the greatest challenge for us as human beings is we actually think we know what we think. Right? We're pretty arrogant about it sometimes. I know what I think. When all the while something else is happening altogether right out there. And so we understand from the way that the brain works. Brain science has absolutely confirmed for us that there is this conscious mind that we have, which is a small portion of our daily life that shows us what we think. But the big, vast expanse of it is the deeper mind, the memories that are stored in deeper memory. I mean, I know I've had the experience of someone coming to me and saying, you know, when you were three years old, you threw that ball through the window and it crashed through our window and it broke it. And I'm thinking, I don't remember that at all. But everybody around me, all the adults around me, remember that memory. That, did I, 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 I did it. I'm sure I did it. It's in deeper memory. It's not useful to me right now. But if I have guilt about it, or I was shamed about it, or I felt embarrassed about it, now that might be affecting me right? That might be something that's running the show. And so I pay attention and I do my work to, to fall into and take ownership of the deeper mind. And when we're talking about the mind, we're often talking about uh, in classes and in Barry's wonderful songs and even today, our mind being like this garden. And we're always growing a garden. We're always planting seeds. We're like sowing seeds constantly of our thoughts that arise up from that, that 
surface mind and from the deeper mind. And we're constantly planting seeds. And some of the things in our garden are weeds. We had a very interesting debate in the green room about what is a weed really? We decided that a weed is in the eye of the beholder, I think is what we came to ultimately. <laughs> because sunflowers, my husband tells me, are technically weeds and he adores sunflowers. And they are choking out the grass in our front yard and we don't care. <laughs> But there might be weeds that we don't want to be growing in our garden or certain kinds of plants or flowers that just don't suit us. And then our work becomes to garden and, and pay attention and get present to our own garden and say, I've got to do something about this. Many people think that we do this just for ourselves, but here's the thing, that when we're talking about mind, the capital M, we all are gardeners and co-creators of our own experience, but it's like we're in a co-op with humanity, right? And your garden affects my garden, and your garden affects my garden, and your garden affects, and the seed you grow in your garden flies off and plants over in my garden, and we all are impacting each other's garden. So we can't just afford to go into this isolated place, I'm just going to tend to my garden. We have to understand that every part of this process is for the sake of ourselves and for all of humanity. And that we are constantly, constantly planting seeds because we are constantly thinking, thinking, thinking every moment of the day. And even at night when we sleep, we're constantly thinking, aren't we? I can raise my hand right now and say, hi, my name is Michelle and I'm an addictive thinker. Hi, Thank you, hi, Michelle, yes. Maybe we should start that group. That group might be good. So a spiritually healthy person works to understand that to change my life, to change the world, I have to do something that we say a lot around here. I have to change my thinking to change my life. I have to change my perspective. I have to change my garden to change my life. I have to take responsibility and accountability for my own garden so that I can begin to grow what it is that I would really like to see not only in my life, but in the world. That I don't have the luxury of standing over and feeding and nurturing uh, resentment plants constantly and thinking I'm gonna have a different experience. It doesn't work like that. Any more than if I plant carrots that the garden's gonna grow broccoli for me. It doesn't have the capacity. The mind says, oh my beloved, grow whatever kind of garden you want. You want a resentment garden? Go at it. You can have the biggest resentment, anger garden you want. Have fun. But will we be happy? Not necessarily. And so the capacity to change our minds is powerful and profound. I've got a couple things that I'm bringing from social media this week to us. And uh, I was scrolling through internet and Jennifer Burnett and I are friends. And she posted something really powerful on her page one day. And she said, I want to share a gratitude today. I'm grateful for my open mind. It has given me the opportunity to change my opinion about things, to change my mind. It's a simple thing to be grateful for, but it's also incredibly powerful. So our capacity to change our minds, to remain open as we feel ourselves constantly looking out and drawing conclusions and coming to decisions about people and things is huge. And in cognitive therapy, there's all sorts of methodologies for helping us to shift our mind, to change our mind. But one of the first things I think we have to do to change our thinking and change our minds is to get our minds out out of the gutter, if you will. I, I think that sometimes we just, we just let slide by the notion that we can constantly worry, be thinking negative thoughts, be critical, be judgmental, have angry, resentful thoughts, and then think the world will change. If I just get angry enough and think angry enough thoughts at people, it'll all change. It doesn't work like this. 
And a huge part of what we have to do is begin to delve into deeper changes and watch our thoughts happen so we can catch them as an observer and make changes. So there's some things to watch for. I noticed that uh, when I was in high school, I got decent grades. I was in the honor society because I got a lot of A's in things like choir and social studies and English, not so much in math. But there was one class I got a really good grade in and it really surprised me and it was logic class. I went to logic class and the, the teacher gave us all these logic problems that we had to go through and solve and find fallacies. And I worked really hard and I went to him one day on this big, huge problem he gave to us. And I presented it back to him. It was a baseball thing, actually. And I presented back to him and said, there's a fallacy in this problem. It can't be solved. And he took the book and he looked at it for days and he came back a few days later and he said, Michelle Madrano is absolutely right. I have been teaching this class and presenting this problem for 30 years and no one's ever pointed that out to me. And he gave me an A and said I didn't have to come back to class anymore. <laughs> so I didn't. Seems logical to me. <laughs> so I, I was so surprised, but I remember some elements that really took me about that. And it was, it was partly because I was in this teaching, but there are some key things to watch for that I think are becoming the bane of our society and our culture and our world right now that are keeping us from growing better gardens. And they are sweeping generalizations. Most sweeping generalizations have extreme fallacies in them. Sweeping generalizations are when we say things like always and never. My husband never. My kids always. Those people over there in that country never. That political party always. That religion never. All those words, I would bet, according to my logic class, about 85% of the time, fallacies up the wazoo, I'll tell you not true. But we think from them and we project them all over each other in anger and frustration. And then we find ourselves growing these weeds that are strange looking weeds that outpicture themselves. And we wonder why we can't find peace. Peace lives in the center. Sometimes people do that. Sometimes people do that. Sometimes they don't. But I'll tell you, violence, war, tyranny starts with people who say, always, never. So we ourselves have to be willing to stand in that space of grace as we perceive ourselves because we do the same to ourselves, don't we? I never get a break. I always have to work so hard. No one ever loves me. Those kinds of broad sweeping generalizations from a logic perspective and from a spiritual health perspective, they don't serve us. So we get to watch ourselves thinking those thoughts and become willing to lovingly challenge ourselves. I love the work of Byron Katie. And I have been lately asking myself a lot about my own thoughts, stopping myself mid-sentence and saying, is that true? Can I prove that that's true? That all people over there believe blah? And usually I can't prove it's true. So therefore I can't stand in it. I can't be with it. And so we've got to be willing to do that. Now, negative town, anger town, frustration town is a town we go through in our human journey. And, and we don't have a teaching that says we never go there. We're not a teaching that denies that sometimes things don't go our way or our life isn't the way we want it and we get frustrated. But we have to see those towns, and I got this example from you, Mom, the other day. We have to see those towns as towns we're going through. If I'm heading to Los Angeles, I might choose to go through Grand Junction. But Grand Junction is not my ultimate goal. Not that there's anything wrong with Grand Junction. All you Grand Junction people, we love you out there. But if that's not my ultimate goal, if my ultimate goal is not to live in anger and frustration, why would I stop there for years and camp out? 
I keep my intention to keep moving and to understand that I'm moving through and that any time I'm triggered by something out there, I have to look here. Practitioner Ken Ludwig posted a great story, one of my favorites from great, the great teacher Thich Nhat Hanh, who passed away recently. And Thich Nhat Hanh talks about a, a monk who left his monastery uh, to go meditate in the middle of a lake one day. And he's in his boat meditating peacefully for hours in the silence, just floating. And all of a sudden, another boat bangs into his boat. And he feels this anger rise up in him. And he opens his eyes because he's going to give that other boat person what for. And he realizes that boat is empty. It just floated into him. And the story says that at that moment, the monk achieves self-realization and understands that anger is within him. It simply needs to hit an external object to provoke it. After that, whenever he met someone who irritated or provoked his anger, he remembered the other person is just an empty boat. Anger is inside me. A joyful story to remember and almost bless those who provoke anger in us or frustration. To say, ah, there's something in me that wants to be smooth and easy and I get to look at that. Now I want to speak about the mind also today, not only from that emotional place, but from an acknowledgement and recognition of trauma response. Because a lot of us have minds that have experienced trauma. And most of the time, we know that trauma happens when people have an extreme experience of pain or anguish, abuse, violence, uh, something that just completely discombobulates them, and that the, the effect of that can often be depression, anxiety, uh, PTSD with dreams and memories that happen. I know that in these last few years with so many deaths, I've experienced PTSD quite frequently from some of those experiences. And what I'm here to say today is that while most of us have put people who have trauma possibly over in another part of the garden and said, well, all those people with trauma, they're over there. What I want to say is that we've all been through a lot of trauma the last few years. We've been sent to our rooms. We've missed connecting with people We've watched, as the news, as Barry points out, 24-7 points out to us about people passing away and heard the stories or maybe lost loved ones ourselves, felt the loss of our life, felt the loss of connection. And I think that we all get to face that we may have a little trauma brain going on ourselves and that that's okay. I love what is being said a lot in the world right now. It's okay to not be okay. But we here want to provide tools, not only here on Sundays and in our classes, but to bring workshops forward of people who can specifically help us. And that's why we're bringing Nick Lawrence next week, a religious scientist who has knowledge about holistic brain and the ability to transcend trauma so that we can be in better relationship with others. And even if you don't choose to participate in the workshop, I encourage all of us to consider and give ourselves a break around our minds to set the intention for healing, but to understand that we may be having a bit of a collective or individual trauma response and that it's okay and that there is help. There's help in the world. There's help in this church. And sometimes we need help to be able to have a healthy, clearer mind and that there's no shame in getting help to allow our minds to relax and calm down. And the last thing I want to share is that a few weeks ago, I was home flipping through channels, and last week, Josh mentioned that he did a talk that was bringing Jesus in July. I'm going to bring Santa into July, because I confess I was watching Miracle on 34th Street, <laughs> the original one in black and white with Natalie Wood. And there's this scene where Santa is in, in Susie's room talking with her, trying to help her believe in him. And she's being very logical. And he says, well, haven't you ever been to imagination? 
And he talks about that as a nation that is a place that you can go. And I'm wondering if we would be willing to pay attention to what we've been pledging our allegiance to. Have we continued to pledge our allegiance to anger and pain and suffering and not doing anything about it? And would we be willing to pledge our allegiance to imagination? And this reminded me that growing up, every day in elementary school at least, I said the Pledge of Allegiance, and it's, it's absolutely incorporated into my being. I can stand here and say it, and it's, it's influenced my thinking. It has had a place in my life. And I wondered if I would be willing to pledge allegiance to possibility thinking. Because that's the other thing I think we get to face right now with the challenges that are going on in our world. We need better imaginations. We need to think outside the box. We need to come up with solutions that are, have never been thought of before. And when I say we, I mean maybe some of us will do it, but maybe some of us who aren't even in this room will do it. But we together can have a vision for a greater world and a greater life for ourselves if we begin to use the mind that we have to imagine to imagine a new world, to imagine ourselves being in Los Angeles, to imagine ourselves being where we really want to be. And I invite us to pledge our allegiance to that nation in our life. And in fact, I sort of rewrote the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'd like to close with my allegiance to imagination. And you can say it with me if you want. I put it on my Facebook for any of you who might want it. It's on my personal page. Here's how it goes. You can put your hand over your heart too if you like. I pledge allegiance to my imagination, to the possibilities of life, and to the ideas for which I stand, co-creativity in God, lifting me into greater freedom at all times. And so it is. Yeah. So as we close our time out, I invite us to pray together and invite our wonderful practitioner prayer partners to stand with us. Our prayerful time is a time to pledge allegiance, to spend time in practice, is to allow ourselves to deepen into the mind that God is as us, to meditate, to pray, is to allow a higher idea to inspire and uplift us. And that's why when we pray, we begin with the notion that God is all there is. That the infinite power and presence that is all through all, in all, as all, everywhere present. And it's right here, right now, in, through, as each one of us. That we are in the mind that God is. We are that mind expressed. And as we do this, as we know this, as we claim this together, we stand as witness to the, the good that our garden is. We choose to grow a garden of power and light and love that contributes to the gardens of every being everywhere in a powerful way to be a contribution that uplifts and supports and sustains a life of possibility, not only for ourselves, but for every every being on this planet. We choose to contribute to a life that is profound and joy-filled, that is full of solutions and possibilities, that's full of love and peace. And we surrender into this awareness right here and right now with great love and joy. And as we do this, we just give thanks and we release this prayer into the action of that law that makes it so. Letting it go, letting it be and saying together, and so it is. Amen. I will stop my thinking If only for a little while Leave my stories at the door for late Step into the silent smile When my cup is empty I am filled to overflow with peace I 
know I have the kingdom in me on a journey that will never cease. Move in me, great spirit. Now I feel you in my heart. In your presence, I remember. Presence, I remember that we never have been apart. Thank you, Dr. Barry. Yes. This is the time in our service where we acknowledge the circle of abundance that flows through our lives. To recognize, as I've been witness recently to so many stories of people who talk about the difference that a community like this makes in their life, how it can uplift and how it can urge them to move forward in their life more powerfully and profoundly, and how for some people, this teaching, this community, someone here has saved their life. And so I'm so grateful for the ways that we contribute to life individually and collectively. And we give thanks for how we all keep this place vital with our prayers, with so many people who are in service to us, and with our financial abundance. And so this moment is an invitation to cycle that financial abundance through our life and into this community. And the ways you can do that are listed on the screen, through texting, through the website, through gifts right here as we pass the baskets out in the lobby. Hobby, we have containers, whatever serves you best. We thank you profusely for your generous donations. And please say our affirmation with me as we prepare to give our gift. Divine love, as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate. And so it is. This talk of the end times again Whenever the game gets rough People saying our time is up And it's all about to blow And who are the chosen ones Whose flag will stand waving in the sun Like in all of those stories that we spun Praying round the fire With our gods of war Fight for a promised land With heaven somewhere far away Will we ever understand When we find the divine in our hearts and minds Each in our own way We'll be living in heaven On that day find the divine in our hearts and minds each in our own way we'll be living in heaven on that day we'll be living in heaven on that day I know that God's always here every moment every year there is no calendar of fear to keep the one away. We're part of the one great plan. Every woman, child, and man, whatever our tribe or clan, our souls will carry on. And the masters come to show us we're not on this road alone. And they leave a trail heaven here and they welcome us back home when we find the divine in our hearts and minds each in our own
Let's start living in heaven Today Thank you, Barry. You're the best, and Bijou, you also, and Darren, and Rob, and Kent. We are so gifted, aren't we? And especially for Dr. Michelle Madrano. Incredible talk, incredible. And I want to take just a moment for those of you that might be with us for the first time, that I will be out in our lobby at our Welcome Center right after the service, and I'd love to just greet you. And also, Hi. there's information about Mile High Got Church. Got a oh, that looks good. Information about Mile High Church at either end at the display racks down there. Smells good. So, smells welcome, fresh. welcome. And what do we have going over here? Yeah, it's the pancake breakfast this morning. Katie got a big spatula there. Wow. So, oh, look at, oh, Josh has got some tongs and we got pancakes here. Gluten-free pancakes, regular pancakes, veggie sausage, regular sausage, yummies in the community center. And all the proceeds go to support our wonderful youth here at Mile High Church. So we acknowledge and thank these kids for their service today. They've been cooking away. Kids will cook too. That's great. <laughs> and I need to acknowledge our practitioners that just arrived. Yeah. If you would like a prayer, a wonderful prayer, take a moment, stand in front of one of them, and it'll make your day. Thank you, Dr. Patty. And we also want you to know that we have our school supply drive going on that Reverend Millie is leading, and uh, we're going to support kids all over this area. So if you'd like to contribute some supplies, you can do so out on the patio. And on July 22nd, we are celebrating the ordination of our own Reverend Michelle Scavetta. Isn't that great? Now, if Reverend Michelle conducted your wedding or something, don't worry, it's still real, it's still valid. It's just that we have a rite of passage that after about three years of service, we can apply to be ordained for life. And so that's what we're going to celebrate and honor. And Michelle and all of us invite you to be with us that Friday night at seven o'clock to celebrate her. Now we invite you to stand for the benediction and peace song. As we go forth, we choose to be a divine light of peace and wholeness, contributing to the mind that God is in these powerful and profound ways. We give thanks that this is who we are what we are and how we live. Thank you, life. And so it is.